Good evening tonight from Tallinn. We're here in this tiny Baltic city near the Russian border to cover large-scale war games that NATO has been holding. It's practice on how to defend against a massive cyber attack launched by a fictitious country that seems a lot like Russia. So NATO is preparing, but today Republican members of the House Intelligence Committee gave President Trump a pass when it comes to Russia. They said they found no evidence of collusion between Trump's 2016 presidential campaign and the Kremlin. Which brings us to that scoop Rachel was talking about. Our investigation has uncovered new information that suggests the Russian lawyer at the Trump Tower meeting, the meeting where Trump campaign officials thought they'd be getting dirt on Hillary Clinton, was far more connected to the Russian government than she'd acknowledged before. In fact, in our interview, she called herself an informant for a Russian government agency. She had previously told a Senate committee that she operates independently of any governmental bodies. For almost a year, Natalia Vesonitskaya has been sticking to the story, confidently declaring that she has nothing to hide. Eloquent, charming, and guarded, she was happy to give us an interview, mm -hmm. but asked her staff uh, yeah. to record it. Но на самом деле мы всегда пишем, мы всегда пишем все интервью, которые я даю. Это моя степень безопасности. Часто We agreed to the recording and asked her the key question. What was she doing at Trump Tower? What objective were you pursuing? And on whose behalf were you pursuing that objective? От собственного имени. Как человеку, которому не все равно эта история. Are you saying you're acting as a concerned citizen? В данном случае я выступаю, наверное, да. The issues she was concerned about were American sanctions, which she says are based on lies and false reporting. She wanted them lifted. Donald Trump Jr. described the meeting as a waste of time. That's not what it looked like to a seasoned intelligence so professional. In intelligence parlance, we look at these kind of relationships almost akin to you know, courtship. John Seifer is a 28-year veteran of the CIA and of spy games with Russia. He says the content of the meeting is less important than the fact that it took place at all. The meeting was billed in an email to Donald Trump Jr. as a meeting with a Russian government lawyer who had information that would incriminate Hillary. The fact that he responded positively would have been a signal to the Russians that, hey, there's a green light here, let's take the next step. However, you can't come at that next step with the full goods for fear that, in the meantime, the Trump campaign would have talked to their lawyers, their security people, and maybe even informed the FBI. Which is why, Cypher says, they sent in a lawyer instead of a spy. It's all part of the slow dance of seduction that would be typical, he says, of developing a covert relationship. Her role would have been all along about deniability. She merely had to show up at that meeting and report back to Russia. Which brings us to the bigger question. How deep are Veselnitskaya's ties with the Russian state? For starters, court documents show she was doing legal work for Russia's intelligence agency, the FSB. How did you get picked to represent the intelligence interest agency? FSB. You weren't representing the FSB at all? Я не представляла интересы ФСБ. Я представляла интересы войсковой части, которая имеет очень отдаленное отношение к ФСБ. So to be clear, you were working for a military unit that has ties to the FSB. Я не могу более сказать вам ничего. If you're a private lawyer or a private business person in Russia, people there understand very well what it means to deal with the state. There's there's corruption, there's danger. Um, but there's also potentially large money and lucrative contacts to be had. And Veselnitskaya has lucrative contacts. She is widely referred to as a legal fixer for Pyotr Katsiv, a former official and powerful Russian businessman. When American prosecutors took legal action against a company owned by Katsiv's son, she went to New York. She was essentially a shadow counsel for one of the defendants in that case. Jamie Nowaday was one of the prosecutors on the case. What does a shadow counsel mean? She's not licensed to practice here in New York, so she couldn't argue in court on behalf of her client. But she nevertheless filed declarations in court. She was 
clearly a driver of the legal defense team. In 2013, the U.S. government confiscated several properties in Manhattan, which, it argued, were purchased with the loot from one of the most notorious crimes ever committed in Russia. This case was unusual because we have this massive tax fraud, but this tax fraud is then connected to the imprisonment, torture, and murder of Sergei Magnitsky, the lawyer who is investigating the fraud and its cover-up. Magnitsky, the lawyer who exposed the $230 million fraud, accused some of Russia's most powerful officials of being involved. They threw him in jail. And after 358 days in prison, he died in excruciating pain on November 16, 2009. Magnitsky became a symbol. In 2012, Congress passed the Magnitsky Act, which placed personal sanctions on the corrupt Russians he named, including some of Vladimir Putin's closest associates. Nowadays, team believed some of the dirty money was used to buy condo units in New York. The U.S. Department of Justice puts out a request to Russia asking for bank records, um, incorporation records because the underlying fraud involved the theft of corporate identities. How did the Russian authorities respond? Essentially, they responded by saying that the U.S. government's allegations were without merit and they would not be providing the records. W were you surprised by that response? Well, yes, because it's not the job of the foreign government to reinvestigate and come to its own conclusion about the merits of the government's case. The Russian government has always angrily denied Magnitsky's allegations of fraud and corruption. But what American prosecutors didn't know in 2014 was the role Veselnitskaya may have played in crafting the official Russian response. What I wanted to ask you about are these emails. If you could take a look at them. The documents are said to be emails exchanged between Veselnitskaya and an official at the Russian Prosecutor General's office. In them, she appears to review and edit the Russian response to the American request for information. NBC cannot confirm the authenticity of the emails, but changes suggested in them ended up in the official document that was sent back to the U.S. Department of Justice. So my question is, what were you discussing in, in these emails and with whom? Are you saying that they were obtained illegally or are you saying that they are false? The edits suggest you were dictating to the prosecutor's office how they should respond to the U.S. Justice Department. Is that the case? It's not true. For some reason, all your American PR machine is accusing my country. You meaning me? At this point, Veselnitskaya started listing off names of Americans, officials, journalists, and private citizens whom she suspected were behind the leak. But we got the emails from a Russian who said they were sent anonymously. How did you get these documents? У нас есть проект, который называется проект досье, почтовый ящик, на который могут люди присылать в анонимном режиме соответствующую информацию. Mikhail Khodorkovsky was the richest man in Russia until Putin took most of his fortune and threw him in jail. When he got out, he left the country and made it his business to fight the Russian government. He's confident the emails came from Veselnitskaya's account. Are these genuine? And if so, why do you think that? Мы полагаем, что это документы подлинные. Мы посмотрели метаданные. Американцы должны точно понимать, что общаясь с госпожой Весельницкой, они общаются не с обычным адвокатом. We also showed the emails to Nowaday, the former government lawyer. The underlining is an addition. The strikeout is obviously a deletion. You can see on paper the dialogue that was going back and forth. I was shocked to see them. I cannot emphasize enough how profoundly troubling and inappropriate those communications are. Why? 
Well, it suggests that the process, certainly in this case, was rigged. I mean, she was going behind the scenes and having communications with the Russian prosecutors about the nature of their response to the U.S. Department of Justice. So she's telling the Russian government what to tell you, which helps her client. And then, after the response comes back to the United States, she uses the language of that response to advantage her client. So this suggests a degree of collusion that you did not anticipate. A absolutely. I mean, there's complete behind the scenes, pulling the strings, interference. Is it illegal or unethical or both? It certainly raises very serious questions about obstruction of justice. It raises very serious questions about false statements to the U.S. court. You said that you never tried to dictate the, the case that the Russian prosecutor was, was giving. If you did, and that's what these documents suggest, would that be an obstruction of justice? Would you... Какое вмешательство? Вы о чем вообще? If you were trying to dictate to the prosecutor Это мы general. заставили прокуратуру Соединенных Штатов... Вы о чем? Серьё... Секунду, секунду, Ричард. Хочу сделать вам замечание под камеру. Mm -hmm. Vesonitskaya said her accounts had been hacked, and she recognized some of the details in the printouts we handed to her. Здесь многие вещи есть из моих обращений. Это было в одной из моих справок, которые я передавала генеральной прокуратуре. Но этого нет. Нет, я не могу это подтвердить. I'm trying to find out in this case whether you were cooperating or colluding with mm -hmm. the Russian state, which raises questions about your background, particularly in Конечно, light of the fact that you were in, in the Trump Tower with the with the Trump the, Tower. That's what this is all about. The only reason I'm asking these questions is because of, of the contact that you had with the most senior people who are now in our government. Я так еще раз, Ричард. Мне совершенно все равно, какое у вас правительство и кто его наполняет. You said your relationship with the prosecutor general is what? Я являюсь адвокатом и я являюсь информатором. So this is not somebody who is separated from state power. She's a very savvy operator and has a level of comfort that what she's doing is in line with what the Kremlin wants done. What the Kremlin wants is to get the sanctions lifted, which is what Vesonitskaya talked about with the Trump team. That fact, together with the suggestion that she had dirt on Hillary Clinton, should, Cypher says, have caused the Trump team to ring the alarm bells. That's simply showing a willingness to collude. That's, if not against the law, it's unethical, immoral, and, and certainly unpatriotic. Veselnitskaya still insists emphatically that she doesn't work for the Russian government or intelligence services. But she appears to have extraordinary access to the upper ranks of the Russian state. As the ex-CIA officer we spoke to said, it's all about deniability. So, it seems, is Russia's use of mercenaries in Syria. Stay with us for more on that after the break. Plus, Congressman Jim Himes on Putin's goals. Vladimir Putin's whole thing is about deniability, projecting force, messing around in areas where, when things go wrong, he can just say, these folks had nothing to do with me. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.